Hi, welcome to our service today. We begin with the, in, the invocation and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn for today is number 563, Jesus, Thy Blood and Righteousness. Jesus, thy blood and righteousness, my beauty are my glorious dress. Midst flaming worlds in these arrayed, with joy shall I lift up my head. Bold shall I stand in that great day, cleansed and redeemed, no debt to pay, fully absolved through these I am, from sin and fear, from guilt and shame. Lord, I believe thy precious blood, which at the mercy seat of God pleads for the captive's liberty was also shed in love for me. Lord, I believe we're sinners more than sands upon the ocean shore. Thou hast for all a ransom paid, for all a full atonement made. When from the dust of death I rise to claim my man, in the skies this then shall be my only plea Jesus hath lived and died for me Jesus, be endless praise to Thee, whose boundless mercy hath for me, for me 
and all thy hands have made an everlasting ransom paid. Our reading for the service today is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 8th chapter, beginning at the 28th verse. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword, as it is written, For your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Elijah was a tough cookie. Most of his ministry, he was God's fugitive prophet. During the ninth century BC, Ahab reigned over Israel's northern kingdom. He was selfish, weak, faithless, and he was married to Jezebel, a Canaanite princess who was notoriously ambitious, ruthless, and devotedly pagan. Elijah was a perpetual thorn in their royal sides. He condemned Ahab for allowing Jezebel to replace God's worship in Israel with Baal worship. He pronounced God's punishment upon the kingdom in the form of a drought that would only end when he spoke the word. And then Elijah disappeared for three long years. When he surfaced again, Elijah stood before that angry king to command him to send all of his wife's, his wife's hand-picked Baal priests to meet him at Mount Carmel for a showdown to prove their God's power. Before an audience of Israelites, Baal was soundly trounced by the Lord. And at Elijah's command, the Baal priests were all executed. Those who saw this awesome display of God's supremacy responded with praise, and Elijah urged the people to serve the Lord alone. The tide in Israel, it seemed to the prophet, had begun to turn for the better. But actually, things were about to get very hot and uncomfortable in the land. For after hearing of the slaughter of her precious priests, Jezebel exploded with rage and put a bounty on Elijah. Any hope that the prophet held for a revival of righteousness in the land of Israel now seemed dead. 
Elijah's courage failed him, and he fled the kingdom in fear. He had had enough, he thought. He was worn out by the years of standing up for the Lord in a land turned against him. Elijah made his way back to the place where the Lord gave his people the law. He went to Mount Sinai to hand in his resignation. But the Lord refused it. He spoke gently to his prophet to assure him that all was not lost in Israel. God was still in charge despite the proud raging and evil deeds of Ahab and Jezebel. And he had a few more assignments for his servant to finish before hanging up his prophetic mantle. So Elijah returned to his service, renewed in faith to fulfill what remained for him to do. We can sympathize with Elijah's breakdown in the face of that death threat from Jezebel. For life often shocks us and it shakes our faith. In 1861, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's dear wife of 18 years perished in an accidental fire. Two years after that, his son Charles informed him by letter that he had joined the Union Army to fight in the American Civil War. That Christmas, the bereaved husband and worried father penned these words. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Our faith and hope in life, are oft, they often rest upon a ground that is an uneven mix of God's promises and our own notions, expectations, and desires. And so we are vulnerable to attack. When trouble threatens us, fear grips our hearts. Satan tempts us to doubt God because we've confused what we think God should do with what he's actually promised to do for us. And we protest, if God really loves me, then why is he allowing me to suffer like this? God's answer, at least one of his answers to our cry, comes to us through the pen of his apostle Paul in our reading today from Romans. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. How can Paul or could Paul have known this? How can we possibly be sure that all things in life work together for our good? We can't know such a thing uh, on the basis of what we see, hear, or feel as we live our lives in this world, because so much evil and malice plays itself out around us, and if we're honest, in and through us as well. And yet, yet we have heard and believe that God loves us, and he gave his, Jesus to be our Savior. We believe that he has called us through baptism and his gospel to be his children. And we also love the one who loved us first. And so through this spirit-inspired this spirit message of Christ's cross, we also know by faith that this God works all things together for our good. For the gospel is God's promise to save all people from their sin and death by the death and resurrection of his Son. It was not his plan B set up in place hurriedly and hastily after Adam and Eve disastrously fell out of faith in Eden. No, their disobedience did not surprise God at all. Before he had created the heavens and the earth, in fact, God knew that this was going to happen, and he had already chosen to save them and their descendants by the giving of his son. As Paul opens another one of his letters, the letter to the Ephesians, he joyfully confesses, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, 
even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless in his sight. Paul confirms this same truth in our reading today. For those whom God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. In Christ, God chose us to be his children before he even created the universe. Jesus suffered and died in history to make us his. The Holy Spirit, through the gospel, calls us to repentance and faith, that sanctifying lifestyle of the children of God. He justifies us before God by clothing us in the righteousness of Jesus, the beautiful garment that our Savior prepared for us to wear by faith in him. And on the last day, the Spirit will raise us from the dead as people who shine with all of Christ's glory, forever bearing his holy image as sons and daughters of the King. This is God's eternal saving purpose for all people. Its fulfillment is certain, so certain that Paul used the past tense to speak of the glory that, from our perspective, is yet to be revealed. Those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Our salvation in Christ is secure. Jesus declared the same thing to his disciples just hours before his arrest. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. In this world, tribulation is the norm, but it's not a sign of our doom. Sinful though we are, God is for us. In Christ, he chose to save us. Jesus died for us and our sins are forgiven. He rose from the dead and he ascended to heaven where he still prays for us. God predestined each of his children to be conformed to the image of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is working that out in our lives. He makes us holy by calling us to repent of our sins, to steadfastly trust in Jesus, and to love our neighbors as God's commands teach us. We are loved by God, and nothing in all creation can nullify that. Even the various kinds of hardships that Paul describes in our reading today, all of these things are ultimately used for our good as God leads us to cling to Christ and his cross as our certainty of salvation. No weapon formed against us can tear us away from the safekeeping of Jesus, our Savior. Well, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow knew by faith that our Lord had overcome the world for us. He believed that since God is for us, no one can truly prevail against us. And that's why he concluded his beloved Christmas hymn on this faithful note. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill, to men. And since we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, we too can face the tempests, trials, and threats that life brings our way with the same confidence that we find prayed in this beautiful hymn. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. 
he lives. Oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but in whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. And Lord, haste the day when our faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. Yes, it is well. It is well with our souls. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you have bidden us to come without money to receive grace beyond price. Hear us as we heed your call and turn to you in prayer today, confident of your promise to hear us and answer us. Father, we have sought meaning, comfort, and sustenance from all the wrong places. Grant us your Holy Spirit that our hearts may be turned to your word, that we may hunger for your Son's body and blood, and that we may discern truth from error. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we give you thanks that you have blessed us beyond what we deserve and given, your, to a, given us to be in your church. Guard her life by your spirit. Strengthen her witness before the nations. Bless all pastors and church workers in their service to us in your name. Bless those now considering and preparing for church work vocations. And answer also the prayers of those congregations who are calling pastors, including our Savior, P Parksville. Bless the mission efforts of the BC Mission Boat Society during this pandemic summer when they provide gospel materials and encouragement to Indigenous leaders from afar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we too quickly focus on what we lack and not upon your unlimited grace. Bless all relief agencies and the services of your church on behalf of the hungry, the homeless, the hurting, and those who have lost their hope. Bless those visited by disaster and tragedy and open our hearts to help them recover from their losses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we are daily blessed to know abundance and freedom. Bless those who defend us from our enemies, who serve us in government and who protect us in our communities. Be with our prime minister, the members of parliament, and the leaders of our provincial and local governments that they may discern the right path and lead us with honor and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we suffer with all manner of ills and afflictions. Hear us and grant us healing according to your will, strength in our times of trial, and peace in the end. We pray especially today for Grant and for all others who are in need of your healing touch. Give your wisdom, blessing, and help upon the efforts of those searching for treatments for the coronavirus. Give humble and wise hearts to people that take precautions needed to limit the virus's spread, and please bring an end to this pandemic. 
Good Lord, deliver us and teach us to depend upon your grace in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we know that your steadfast love and mercy are forever, but our heart is daily tested and tempted. Give us strength and deliverance that we do not despair, but have confidence in your sufficient grace. Guide us to find our consolation and strength in your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we are daily and richly surrounded with your love and care. Grant eyes to, uh, to us to see the mercies that are new to us every morning from you and give us grateful hearts that we have received, that, that what we have received we may share with those in need and generously use to support the work of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we remember the saints who lived by your mercy and died in Christ. We long for that day when all divisions will end and the church in heaven and on earth shall be one in your presence, singing your praise and your kingdom without end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask you to grant us all things that are needful to keep us from all things harmful to us and to our salvation. For we trust your wisdom and your love. Teach us to pray without fear, Thy will be done, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. One announcement, I want to invite you to take a few moments this week to write a short uh, note of greeting to your brothers and sisters in Christ here at St. Paul's, those especially you haven't seen for a while. Um, this is, we're, I'm really thankful that we have this opportunity now to meet at least once a month for worship, um, but I'm also uh, thinking of us as a congregation and feeling um, just how how strange and also how hard it is for us to to be separated on an ongoing basis and since this could go for a while i think this is is a really good idea so I invite you then either by email or sending it in on in, through the post just uh, send us a brief note and we will be including these in our newsletter that will be coming out for next Sunday. So if you're sending it by, by uh, mail, uh, you better get right on it. <laughs> anyway, I uh, hope you can take part in that. If, if yours comes later, we may post it on Facebook if we have your permission for that. All right, till next week, God bless you. And just one more thing, uh, if you would like to uh, receive notifications about our uh, services and other, other recordings on, on this channel, um, please touch or click or whatever the um, subscribe button, the red button that you see um, on this page. And then uh, also uh, you, can put it, you can click on the notifications uh, bell as well. That way you'll, you'll be able to continue to follow along with us. Thanks.